Gravity Rush's director would like to make a third game and bring it to the series. Now, I'm not going to lie. I didn't play Gravity Rush 2 when it came to the PlayStation 4 back in the day. I looked at it. It just necessarily was not my type of game. However, there seems to be an importance for games like these. In fact, the proof is in the pudding and seeing that Astrobot is actually doing well in sales. I can't even find that thing. I mean, I, th I I just had the, you know, story bookmarked. I think it's definitely something that PlayStation should prioritize. A lot of it's smaller, and when I say smaller, I'm talking about not necessarily big name productions, seem to me to have been, you know, mostly abandoned over the years. And those audiences that could actually benefit from them could have benefited from them a long time ago. So apparently this story came up here on uh, VG Chronicles, Video Game Chronicles. I think that's the name of the website here. Uh, Keichiro, Ke Keichiro uh, Toyama is now working on Slitherhead with his newly found Bokeh Game Studio. Gravity Rush's director, Toyama, said he would be interested in making a third Gravity Rush game if the opportunity was offered to him. Apparently, he's not working on Slitherhead, and even if it wasn't a new game, if there's any opportunity for me to be involved with anything re related, I would be grateful to do so. He also confirmed that he would like to see the first two Gravity Rush games on PC, given now that Sony is committed to releasing PC ports of a number of its PlayStation titles. I think there's a lot of opportunity for PlayStation in gaming. This is something that really did perplex a lot of folk when PlayStation uh, and one of their their bosses came out and said that they didn't have any original IPs that they had prioritized and so on and so forth. I think that was actually quite shocking more than anything. If anybody actually thinks about it, little games like these and the studios that made them, PlayStation seemingly had, in a sense, coalesced and closed down. I think you could tell that the strategy was about to change. They were about to continue to fund and invest in big studios like Naughty Dog, Insomniac. Well, they acquired Insomniac a little later, but Santa Monica and, you know, even their studio up there that made Infamous, which is pretty much, you know, the studio known now for the Ghost series, Sucker Punch. When you think about it, a lot of those other smaller studios, and I say smaller in quote, even though they're very pivotal, you know, you can have a big and a small studio pipeline. And those small studios can have expertise that can really help you crush out games that you need. But anyone could have seen those closures and been able to picture something interesting if anybody was thinking about it from a, you know, I guess forward thinking perspective. I wasn't talking about this stuff then. And I'm not saying I would have seen it. What do I know? But in seeing these closures, you now realize that they wanted to pretty much invest in big production and then money had smaller productions and then possibly other third party games to kind of fill that void. An audience member of mine was asking me a very interesting set of questions, and I thought it was an interesting, you know, thread, an interesting line of, uh, you know, thoughts and thinking in that regard. And they were asking and saying, you know, Xbox has this many studios. Why do they not have many games just pumping out of those studios? What is holding them back? What has been the, the challenge for them not you know, pushing out these games? And I said, well, I mean, I guess the games are not ready. You know, you can't force a game to come out when the game is not ready to come out. And they said, well, and this is very interesting. They said this. They said, that's the problem. Why are the games not ready? I mean, I was so surprised. I was like, what do you mean? Why are games that are not ready, not ready? Here's the comment here on the channel. And they were, and I was like, you know, and they were like, that's the problem. The game should be ready. And if they're not ready, they should be doing like PlayStation and getting third party exclusives to fill the gaps and Game Pass and for their customers until the first party is ready. Here's the thing, though, uh, Spectre, uh, who actually said this in the comment section. I think Xbox has a pipeline that brings a lot of small games across the you know the board with big games. I mean, Game Pass is the one filler. I mean, you're asking for them to fill their own um, you know lineup when they already do. The only thing is they don't money hat them. They just give the games a Game Pass exposure for the most part. So they're somewhat doing that. And I think it's people that are not in the Xbox ecosystem that are mostly confused about Xbox's strategy at the end of the day, because for some strange reason, again, like I said, you know, a lot of PlayStation fans have the biggest opinions about Game Pass, yet they have zero experience with the service. They'll make fun of it. They'll call it poor pass, welfare pass, rent pass, all these names, but they're not in the ecosystem. They're not aware of how it actually works. 
And so they say some things that makes me really, you know, scratch my head and go, how can somebody not know that this is exactly the same, uh, you know, a, a consumer friendly version of the strategy anyways, because a game like Lies of P when it came out, a game like Wo Long when it came out, I mean, I think 2023 was such a bustling year for third party games on Game Pass. It was insane. And even 2023, they didn't bring out too many games, but Starfield came out. But that was exactly the year that showed exactly what Game Pass was really about from that perspective. So this is, in my opinion, seeing this director come out and say this to me is very emblematic of something that, you know, PlayStation shifted to in their bid to chase down the bigger games to sell consoles and then abandon the smaller games, but instead use that money in what they thought was a more efficient way to then money hack games and so on and so forth. It's very interesting to see it. And it's very interesting to also see people asking that Xbox should do the exact same thing, which I think is anti-consumer. If Wolong was blocked off from you, that would be anti-consumer because Xbox went ahead and took money and money had it. If a game like, uh, you know, Lies of P was blocked away from you, that would be anti-consumer. And I say it about Stellar Blade. I see people saying, oh, he's crying about Stellar Blade because he can't play it. You guys must be quite, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know what to say to that, but, you know, I'm not even going to entertain that that comment. I think it's just outright somebody just wanting to be silly about, you know, things that they know nothing about. But, hey, Gravity Rush, games like that. Those of you on the PlayStation ecosystem, those of you who play PlayStation games, what do you think? Do you think PlayStation missed a big opportunity? Do you think it should go back to doing things like that in a bigger fashion rather than just depending on the massive games, using its money more in a focused way on its own studios and bringing games to its consumers and just let the third party people bring the games that they were going to bring to you anyways. I just feel like that would be more games for everybody at the end of the day. Does anybody not think so? Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you guys' time and audience. Hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one. Peace out.